Attention, Austin guitarist. Are you in need of setup or repair on your axe? Well, I have the guy for you. That's my friend Jason Swedberg over at J. Scott Luthery. You can find him at J. Scott Luthery on Facebook. Gang, I've been taking my guitars to Jason for over 20 years. And not only does he do the very best job, but he has the fastest service and the best prices in town. Find him at J. Scott Luthery on Facebook or jason.swedberg at gmail.com. Gang, whether it's acoustic or electric, Jason is your guy. Get your guitars fixed. Hello, I'm Johnny. I'm your host. Welcome to the show. I hope you guys are all having a fantastic week. Yes, this show is dropping on Wednesday because for the month of February, How Did I Get Here is dropping three shows a week. That's 12 shows this month. If you're doing exercise, if you're driving, if you're going on a long drive, this is a perfect time to catch up with some of your favorite artists. We've got a lot of, lot of great shows coming up. I hope you listen to Monday's show with the amazingly talented Curtis McMurtry. Today, I have an amazing show with my dear friend, Andy McIntyre. Now, before I get into this, I got to tell you, on Saturday night, Andy and I had this long conversation, and his wife too, Lisa. Like, she got on there, and we, I guess I was on speakerphone with them. But, like, I'm talking about, like, a few hours, like maybe three hours. I was making dinner. I was having cocktails. We were having a great time, and it's always a great time talking with Andy. Andy has a brand new, like, two-sided single, like a double single. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he's got a song called Find Yourself, and, uh, and then it comes with a different version of that song that's called Fuck Yourself. <laughs> and that one's produced by uh, Matt Lorenzen. And uh, the Find Yourself single was recorded with, uh, with the dudes Eric Harrison and Michael Ingbear at 601 Studios. Great dudes. I recorded a version of a song that I'm hopefully going to be releasing soon. These guys are great producers. Andy, Andy's just a great, great songwriter. Uh, he was on earlier in 2020 when he released his single Dirty Conversations, which is available now wherever it is you stream and download your jams. You can find him at, at McIntyre rocks.com always great talking to andy mcintyre man he's a phenomenal songwriter phenomenal singer great guitar player and we talk about a lot of stuff man we talk about basically uh he moved into a new house has a new studio he's working with other artists as well like producing them and and recording them and mixing some stuff for people but he's also working on new stuff and he's writing stuff and the funny thing about andy is i guess at one point when he came out he was he was heavy on the guitar and he was out there in the guitar places where people do the guitar things, right? So I hope that he's not pigeonholed this way. But we started talking about this is that he's a great songwriter. And he's, he's not a blues guy by any means. And you'll hear that when you hear this song, Find Yourself slash Fuck Yourself. That, you know, he, he, he delves in a world of like songs and he's a great songwriter. He's got great choruses, great singer, and it just all around a great dude. So without further ado, please enjoy my conversation with my dear friend, the amazingly talented Andy McIntyre. Let's get down. Uh, allergies are kind of hitting me a little bit today. Yeah, man. It's been a rough one, hasn't it? You came early. Yeah, I did. Dude, I went to the beach with my family for like oh, a little over three weeks, like almost a month. And uh, I was living I saw the, that. I was living the dream down there, and I like drove through Bastrop on my way back. And I hadn't taken a Zyrtec <laughs> once. Yeah. 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 I, it's I, intense, man. Yeah. Like, frankly, just fl like flying in back into Austin, not that I've been on a plane, I've not been on a plane for those of you watching, but in, in the past when it's been December, January, February, March, 
getting off the plane, walking around, or, or just, just even taxiing onto the runway. I can feel that cedar just... Yeah. You can feel it. You can. Unbelievable. How have you... Uh, have you been holding up otherwise? You said, didn't you move in the middle of this whole thing? We did. We did something totally insane. We did... I mean, we, we were all proper about it, and we we basically moved more or less ourselves and we only hired movers three guys to help us move like the really big bulky stuff but everything else we moved ourselves i mean we you know we moved up the road it wasn't it wasn't like oh we're like 35 minutes away it was just like 3 to 5 minutes away yeah 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 dude your uh, your studio looks killer by the way for those that Thanks. can't see He's got a great oh, looking here. studio. No, no, no. They can't see. Oh. They're just hearing this with their ears. Yeah. Oh, okay. And imagining with their eyes. If you can imagine, there's a back wall. Um, but you didn't you didn't cut this new song Find Yourself there, did you? Um I cut uh I cut Find Yourself. Like 80% of that ish, maybe 83% of that was cut at my old home studio. Okay. And then I took those stems at the beginning of last year. Like, what was it? January, I think. And I took those down to 601. Yeah. And we, we came up with Michael Inger and Eric Harrison. And I came up with ideas for, for like real actual drum hits some real drum um, hits. Boom, 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 boom. You know, that kind of stuff. And um, I think Michael added shakers somewhere, but we wound up muting those in the final mix. And I added, I took my acoustic and I went in DI, which, which you, you're like not supposed to super do. Super right? uncool, man. It's super uncool, especially in the studio when, when you have a, acoustics. I went in DI right into my amp and then Eric put a, a distortion pedal in front of it. And I was like, and we're both like, that sounds like shit. Let's record it anyway. So <laughs> we recorded it and they, they were able to carve it up in such a way that it actually wound up working during, I think it's the choruses. Yeah, yeah. Or, I can hear it in there. there. Yeah, it, it, it sounds kind of like an electric, but kind of like an acoustic. Yeah. You know. And then what, Eric, they, those guys mixed it? That version of it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, this song is like, it's a great song. But I will tell Thanks. you this, man. It's like huh. the Scarface of songs. How many times oh. do you drop f bombs in this song? <laughs> yeah. Have you ever counted them? Uh, I've actually not. Um, but but for some reason, I keep blinking every time I hear it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. Um, Thirty-five, maybe. That's a lot, man. It, it, it is, but I wanted to make sure that... Uh-oh, Johnny? Yeah, can you see me? I just wanted to make sure people people were understanding what I was saying. What are you doing, man? I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. There we go. So you write a song like this as a sweet jam. What... what, what uh, you you were like, oh, I don't care if they play this, don't play this on the... Did you make a radio version? What does it have, no words? Yeah. I'm joking. <laughs> right? No, it's that's funny because I've, I've, I've made the same joke. Um, <laughs> Michael and I talked about well, all, all three of us, rather. We, well, actually, all four of us because there's a second version of the song. Um, we've talked about doing like a radio edit, but it's... I mean, that would be like watching Scarface on uh, WGN or like you know Fox Seven Morning News. Like, so, like, like who? Like, like Tim would probably have to sit there and like mute every time I'm saying F, and there, there'd be like gaping holes in the entire. <laughs> you wouldn't. You wouldn't. You wouldn't put in new words for it. Nah, I, 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 I kind of, I, I don't know. I mean. Okay, so look, this is, this is sort of, sort of my I didn't reason. mean to make this the issue because it's a great no, song. No, 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 no. Yeah, because <laughs> this is totally a question that that I've I've been grappling with. 
2021, do you keep stifling yourself? Do you keep sort of editing yourself to the point and changing language to, to, to the point where it no longer means really what it's supposed to mean? And even if it does accidentally kind of offend someone, are you, are you doing it out of malice? No, I'm not doing it out of malice. Am I, am I, am I doing it to be a, a bad person? No, I'm trying, trying to be an artist. So, you know, you, you had fuck you and a fuck you too. You had that. And, and then the other version was forget you. No, I can kind of see why, why that works for him because there's kind of a, kind of a Disney like loop to that melody. Yeah. There's also like, I mean, in that case, I'm I'm pretty sure there was starting to they could feel like like if all of a sudden this song was like oh shit this this could have like a a you know four hundred million dollars coming you know its way right then you you'd probably be like uh you know substituting all the words like Frank <laughs> Fork <laughs> Fringe <laughs> Foul Fun. Yeah Hot uh so go ahead yeah, so yeah all right well no, it's I just, a, sorry go ahead really have um it's just strange because what would you put in its place um That's what I'm funk saying. you yeah yeah that doesn't really work uh um dump you um, yeah, no. I, I don't know. You're 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 a great songwriter, so you you, you tell me, man. <laughs> Even I can't come up with that many words. No, I'm just joking. It would it would literally have to be muted out or um, replaced. A, because in the yeah, Scarface, in the WGN Scarface, he says like, you know, fake frig, you, frag. Yeah. fringe you, fake you, man. Yeah, fringe you, man. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, it's a great song. Where did the inspiration come from? So the inspiration did come from, I tried to read that book, The, the Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. And in the last two years, I've, I've sort of picked up either kind of fringe books or books that are like bestsellers. And I've been sort of reading them in pieces because I, I've never been one to like sit down and just very seldom able to sit down partly because of time and just like start to finish read an entire book front to back i, I think very few books i've ever done that one of which was actually mario puzo's godfather funnily enough speaking of gangsters but that book is so well written and especially after seeing the movie you're just like well this is almost written for the movie even though it, it wasn't but um it was so pardon me they they paramount gave him money while he was writing the book and helped in tandem. You're kidding. I, nope, di I didn't know not that. kidding you. That makes so much more sense now because everyone's sort of facial features in the book are like this. It sounds like he's actually describing James Caan. Yeah. 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 It's, oh, incredible. I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, you learn something new every day. Yeah, you do. Good, bad or fucked. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I, I tried reading uh, Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. I, I understood, or at least my interpretation of what the art, uh, author was talking about. I more or less kind of got it, but I, I don't know what it was. I, I, I couldn't get into the actual tone of the book. There, there was something a little too... And God forbid I offend anyone here. It was a little too broed out for me. And I... I sort of like put it down and I, I left it and then I came back to it. Cause I, I thought I was being kind of the asshole, kind of the bro about her flipped through, skipped around a little bit more. I'm like, okay, okay. I get it. And I put it away. And then I had this really weird experience with somebody who really pissed me off. And I said, you know what I do? I'm not going to give a fuck about that emotionally here in the outside world i'm, I'm going to go upstairs i'm, I'm going to fire up the studio and i'm going to write about the feeling not specifically about the person but just just the feeling and and then i started to kind of direct a little bit of the, of the frustration toward things like social media and and how easily people have been able to 
manipulate that and thus manipulating people. I mean, we're still very much in the throes of all of that. Yeah, dude. You know, it's crazy, I man. Pol- can't believe I'm saying this, but it's like politicians have become the new rock stars. There's something very wrong with that. I don't care what side you're on. That's 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 not good. That's true, man. You don't really hear about Miley Cyrus or anyone or Lady Gaga's meat dresses or anything anymore. <laughs> um, I mean, you do, but, but it's that, you know, in an article. So, dude, uh, mm-hmm. uh, Quite you, Max, what's Max yeah. Lor- Lauren? Max Lo- Lorenz. Lorenzen, sorry. I, man, I, no, my, my handwriting is terrible. Mac, Mac, no. Max Lorenzen did a mix of this, and this one's just called Fuck Yourself. Yeah, that, that was technically, that's a complete reimagining of, of, of Find Yourself from the ground up. Right, right. Okay, so yeah. uh, a, a few quick questions. The first one being, who is Mac, Max Lorenzen? Lawrence. Max Lorenzen is um, like like Todd Wolfson. He doesn't really exist. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> oh shit, man! That was cold. <laughs> cold. I, I'm playing off a joke you came up with a, a couple months ago. But <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's not a real guy. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I'm such an idiot, dude. No, it's funny. Um, no, but both people, <laughs> for you listeners out there, both people are very real, rest assured. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Both equally- extremely real. Yeah. So Max is, he's, uh, I, I, he's actually going to come over later. I, um, I, I, I would say first and foremost, he's, and rightfully so, he's a freelance audio engineer, mixer, sound designer and um acoustician funnily enough he actually helped help me balance out the speakers I, I bought cool um he's really really sharp dude and but he's also i think from from what i understand is he's danny reich is from good danny studio i think he's kind of like the secondary engineer kind of kind of business partner over there oh cool i think and um, uh, and so I, I've actually not worked with Danny, but but I've worked with with Max. Okay, so I like I like Danny a lot, man. Uh, so so what was the what was the idea like? How did you whose idea was it to to give Max the tune? Did he hear it and go like, oh, I can do something freaky deaky with this? Or had you already done the thing with with uh, Michael and Eric, and you wanted a second version? Or what 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 what's the deal? That was something totally separate. That was like I was. It was probably two in the morning, and I hope hope this comes through okay. Like, find yourself goes. And I was. I got kind of loaded one night as I. Uh, uh, off and on kind of done during quarantine and I'm sure I'm not alone at all, but, but I went, what if, what if I changed the key? And I started singing it like Neil Young, Tom Petty, like, I I don't give a fuck about you. Yeah. And like, it was real slow and really slow. And, and I was like, ah, it's kind of cool. When I started to record that, I was like, it's a little too slow. It's, it's, it's too much of, of, a, of a left turn or right turn, however anyone wants to look at it. Um, it was not a political joke. And so I, I sped it up and I was like. <laughs> and I. And I found a the the actual meter, which is I think 128 beats per minute. Funnily enough, because I think the other one's 138, <laughs> and I just built it from there. 
and started over overdubbing stuff and started singing over it. And I have a pretty good collection of mics here. I, I have a very nice preamps. This is a very good sounding room. And I then went through and cleaned everything up and isolated everything and reprinted stems through all my outboard because, you know, I'm, I'm using samples in it too. Like, like there's real samples of, of real drums, but, but I, but I've gone through and found loops and found specific hits. Right. And then, and then placed out on the grid, if you will, and then just sort of overdub over that. So, so everything's all organic on it, except all of the, um, all the drum hits. Okay. But, but, but most of the drum tracks don't sound like they originally sound. I, I really like to make them sound fucked up and, and not like the source. Right. So I got everything pre-mixed ready and I was like, you know, I could mix this, but I'm so close to it and I've, I've done so much work on it. I'd rather have a second pair of ears. Right. And I, I called it Max. You know, just get like a fresh perspective. Had you ever worked with him before or how'd you know him? No. Why'd you call it Max? It what made you call Max? Of all people. Um, oh, I, I'll, I'll tell you, funnily enough, um, in February, no, excuse me, in September of last year, had the had, had this damn outbreak not happened, uh, I was supposed to have a triple bill show with, um, actually, it, one of them was, was, was just a double bill. Uh, it was, it was going to be with... Um, uh, Jonathan Fox of Foxtails, and and I knew Jonathan Fox had worked with Max, and okay. you know I, I, I've heard some of Max's work, and he came over here and helped with the new speakers, and that's was like, oh, that's right, Max mixes too. Just gonna call him up. Nice, yeah, nice. So uh, we talked early on in the pandemic on the mics but we've also mm -hmm. we've had some i've i've called you when i've drunk before right and i've faced i've, I've like i've like i've like <laughs> facebook video chatted you when i was drunk too yeah and and i was not exactly sober no, either no, no i just didn't want to speak for you i just like no, I that's, speak that's for fine. myself legally uh <laughs> <laughs> but you you released a, a song that you had done uh partially with the same guys eric harrison and michael Ingba, and i had just done when we had spoken, I just before quarantine, I did a tune with those guys. That's done. I still oh, okay. need to release it and stuff, but um, but yeah, yeah. Uh, they're great to work with, man. They're really uh, mm -hmm. they bring a lot to the table. And uh, anyway, that song was called "Dirty Conversations." So now you're you're releasing this not just as a single, but like as a, like a forty five. Right. Yeah. And. Uh, I just read that uh, uh, Bandcamp is going to start offering people the option of getting their vinyls printed. You know, yeah, I saw that too. I wonder, uh, I wonder how long the wait's going to be on that shit, man. Can you it's imagine? Probably, it's probably, uh, but you know, we toyed with putting out "Find Yourself, Fuck Yourself" is you know because it's, it's basically a double single. <laughs> Excuse me. So put it out as a seven inch. But, but the question is, is that uh, monetarily a smart move right. during this <laughs> this continued twenty twenty right. extravaganza? Right, right. Not to bel belittle anyone or anything. I'm just saying. Yeah. Anyway. Well, so how are you doing during this? I mean, you moved. It looks like you're inspired. I mean, are you working on stuff? Other new stuff? Is that why Max is coming over? Well, well, actually, he's he's coming over because I've I've I reinstalled some gear into my desk, and uh, and this here's here's a, a piece of sound physics. If you take out or install any new piece of gear in or are usually inside of the desk, what whatever desk that happens to be, you're going to get it's either going to be real or a perceived shift in a either hopefully not, but sometimes the stereo image or there's going to be like an EQ shift. Oh. And I totally heard one and it kind of mid range sounded a little bit scooped to me, just, just a little bit. And so, you know, Max is a really, again, he's a super sharp guy and 
he was he's basically shown me that like if you just move the speakers a little bit this like we're talking like a quarter of an inch it will just it, it changes everything it's really crazy it's strange shit but it's you know uh in a world of minutia quarter of an inch is big that and that's that's what she said <laughs> um, <laughs> um all right so uh so let me ask you this, man, because you, while I was going through all the tunes today and I listened, I didn't listen to your older stuff, uh, like the album Ruby or anything like that, mm-hmm. oh, but okay. I, I listened like from Melomania, basically like since I met you to now, right? All right. the tunes, seeing what's going on. And you're like a, uh, if, uh, if a radio station played rock and roll, that was new mm-hmm. your stuff would be so great on that thanks you know what i mean are there station you know what i'm saying like like right it's got it's got enough hook to get you into a you know what i mean right what do you right. view, what do you what do you what do you call what you play <laughs> <laughs> uh uh and I don't, I don't mean that is. weird. No, I, I know because uh, this is, some, you know, it's funny is I, I went over to uh, Starbucks and I grabbed a coffee and raised home. You know, I did, th- I did 35 and a 30. That's living dangerously out here. And I was actually asking myself that question. Funnily enough, I was listening to Stabbing Westward and I was like, these guys, they label themselves al- alternative, yet it sounds more like uh, industrial rock to me. But it just, just as like an example, because labels are labeling genres of music is kind of funny. Um, but my my sound is it's changed quite a bit, and I think because I, I I have more freedom creatively to try new things and 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 take what's was tried and true and really start twisting it around because. I, I think it's important that sorry, my stupid thing is falling over. It's that's what she said. Yeah, exactly. Sorry. It's, it's wait. Hold on, man. Really You're falling important. apart over there. All right. Either yeah. <laughs> Um I know it's it's this little tripod again. That's what she said. And, you know, the adage of, you know, where you're going, if, if you have no idea where you're coming from. And I, I, I know that I've studied a whole bunch of blues and I'm very proud of that. And I've studied even some, some kind of jazzy stuff too, but I've also studied a lot of rock and it just seems like I can speak it's easier for me to speak the rock language than any other language. Maybe because rock is already like a hodgepodge. Modern rock is an amalgamation of a lot of different stuff. And, and usually when, when people are like, oh, you shouldn't be allowed to produce dance elements. You, you shouldn't be adding this. You shouldn't be adding that. It's like rock sort of a, you can kind of throw anything into it. Right. Um, but I, I, I've still not answered your question. I don't know what I would call my genre. It was just well, it's, it's fun. To... It's funny because yeah, because you play guitar, right? Like, okay, that Andy McIntyre plays guitar, and you can fucking shred, right? But on these records, it's not mm-hmm. like it's it's not like a blues scene. You're playing like melodic hooks on guitar and like doing textural stuff with guitar that doesn't really live in any kind of blues world at all no do people still well, peg it, you is that that that's what i'm saying is just because you did do this kind of thing at one point do people still peg you as that you got to be like no 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 i'm 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 this guy uh yeah occasionally you know you'll you'll run into that or the algorithm thinks you're doing the same thing as, uh, you know, some, some famous 
blue sky and it's it's like well no not really it's like well you have a stratocaster but yeah exactly yeah yeah yeah. well i saw the picture he was wearing a leather jacket he had a stratocaster the dude must be going you know yeah must be going (laughs) go fuck yourself i told my wife (laughs) don't give a fuck about that of course that's mark david lee roth (laughs) uh i i i just i just follow my gut i go with what my head is telling me and i if I hear something where where it's like, okay, this is what this song needs here. And, and, and you know, funnily enough, I actually just finished up working with two other artists in this new room, one of which is Jason Harrell, who is someone I've, I've known for years, um, but he like Southern Gothic country rock. And I basically sort of kind of co-produced, but largely handled all, all the was mixing stuff on, on, on that and I was he was he trusted me to start adding flourishes to it because it was like okay this this song needs to go here this this song is telling me to go there and I would add little punches here and you know just just ideas voicings whatever but um it came out really really great and I think I think part of it is it, it, how can I say this without sounding arrogant or conceited? Well, I guess I just have to say it. it I understand you produced. You are. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not by any stretch of the imagination, you know, the world's greatest mixer or anything like that. You know, I'm not a, not a Tim Paul, but, but I understand how, how, how to put a record, quote unquote, a record together. What, what, what is the purpose of this song here? Yeah. Do you butt heads with other mixers at all? Because you um, because you have that vision, or do you do you do you, the people you get? Obviously, I can't really imagine you yelling at Tim Palmer, or not that not that not that Eric Harrison. It's it's just kind of hard to yell at Tim. The idea of yelling at actually Eric's so sweet. I can't imagine the idea of yelling at him either. So. Actually, once I, I I did yell at Eric, and it was just because the two of us just totally misinterpreted interpreted each other. And once, actually, I did piss off Tim, but it was brief, and it was me being your <laughs> the cl- the classic, you know, singer. The, the guy singing here is like, oh, uh, Tim, th- there's this one word. It just seems a little different from like mix seven, and we're on mix nine, and he wasn't having any of that. Yeah, and and rightfully so. And then a few years later with Jason, I ran into the same thing. Only this time the tables were turned and I was like, oh my God, this is what it feels like. No wonder he cut me off the knees. This is ridiculous. You yeah. Know? Well, there is that <laughs> thing. There's that thing where like, you know, uh, like you start out and you work in these places and it's with a dude and he's mixing right. the thing and you're sitting right there with him like, oh no, hey man. Like right when he's EQing the kick drum, you're already, already already saying something to him right and then you get into the bigger world where there's the guys like i've never worked with tim but i can only imagine you send tim the thing and tim Mm -hmm. goes like or or if you go there it's like hey sit over in another place and i'll let me get my groove and present to you what i'm hearing so you don't nitpick me from the kick drum on which and 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 tim very very smartly at first he we were we were going to do it like that and then I think he, I don't know, maybe he heard, of course, I, and I've changed quite a bit since then, but maybe he heard, it's like, oh, so sometimes Andy's a little too hands-on or, or, or whatever. And he, he, okay, here, here's where, here's where I can be the most effective for you. Just stay home and, and I'll do the mix and I'll email you versions of mixes right, and right. you give me the. <laughs> well, All right. Fine. Yeah. Yeah, well, there's that thing where you think about like somebody like Tim, where you're like, uh, "Well, hey, you know who let me get my my groove going? Pearl Jam. They let me do that. <laughs> Can I just fucking get my groove going here? Right. And that all turned out okay for everyone, right? Relax. Right. Right. Well, I, I'm 
Sure. Um, well, there's a, there's a famous story, and really Tim should be telling it, but that now fan favorite song, Pearl Jam song, Black, almost got a heavy edit like right in the middle of it because Tim was like, it's too long. And Eddie was like, no, no, don't, don't fucking edit my music. And, it, and the two of them really got into a kind of a heavy argument about it. Yeah. So, I mean, ours was never anything like that. He, he actually made one edit in Mellow Man that I was like, oh, wow, cool, great. I never would have thought of that. And I, I, I didn't give a shit. I just thought it sounded great. Right. So are you, are you working with a lot of artists there in the studio? Well, I've only, only worked with uh, two or three others. And um, how's that? how was it yeah or, what's going on is yeah, this something good. is this something you want to be doing you want to be producing and doing stuff out of that room and yeah i mean i it's it's really too bad there was not a video feed but i mean like i i have a, I have a full-on setup over here the the only thing i would not be able to track in here is drums just because the room's not quite big enough but um you know i, I worked with jason i worked with um i was actually gonna going to work with this other friend of mine, Cassie, but the, you know, this virus is keeping everyone, every, all of us sort of physically apart. Also, it, it turns out too, that, um, I don't exactly have the ideal bl blood type, excuse me, I'm burping. I don't exactly have the ideal blood type for this virus. I have the blood type the virus likes. Oh, okay. So I have to, I have to physically keep my distance until I get vaccinated. Sure. Um, um, are you, do you record stuff for other people? Do you play on people's, do they send you tracks and stuff? Yeah. I, I, I even, I even did that in the old room too. You know, is stuff Eric and Michael have, have sent me like, can, Hey, can you add some rhythm? Can you add some lead? Can, can you throw up a room mic and just give us a room mic or can, or can you give, kind of give us both and send stems back? Sure. Okay. Here. Venmo, can, you know? Yeah. Can maybe. you whittly, 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 whoo? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, that's you know that's it's, it's funny though when when people do ask me to do that, I'm always a, a touch reticent to you do a guitar solo on it. It's like, well, but that's and and this is where my producer hat comes on. Seeing how I'm wearing a Frenchie hat, ha ha ha. The, the fucking producer's hat goes, but that's not what the song calls for. That's totally wrong. And it's really hard to like call them up then or, or text them. And go. It, usually it's a phone call. You go, hey, I'm really flattered. You want me to shred on this, but I'm going to send you back a couple different ideas here because I don't want this to be about me because this, you know, this dude's singing about his wife who's left him. You know, or right, something right, right, heavy right. like. Right. It doesn't make, it makes more sense to be more like Slash in November Rain and not Eddie Van Halen here. that's a fucking that is epic dude i have a uh yeah. i have this uh i have this live it's i guess i still have it on my ipod this this live guns and roses album that came out in the mid 90s and it mm -hmm. has uh, fucking the best like 14 minute version of november rain you've ever heard <laughs> i'm not kidding you man it's epic it's epic at first you laugh but it's God, so God. epic yeah it's been it's been about a year now since you and me uh, made our debut as guitarists in uh, yeah. in Jay Milano's band at yeah. Antones, yeah. home of the blues. Yeah, that's funny because that that picture every once in a while kind of comes across my timeline, or yeah. it actually comes across my phone timeline. You know, because everyone's phone stores that shit now. But and I see it, and I'm like, oh yeah, that was twenty. No, that was January of 2020. Yeah, that was like a month before everyone's life got weird. I mean, it feels like... It doesn't feel like it was just one year ago. It feels much longer. No, and that was a pretty epic... That was one of those... Uh, that was one of those go there for sound check at five things, and then, like, we were there Waiter. until two in the morning. Yep. Like, we were upstairs at the after thing, hanging out, and... I think... I think right and, uh, yeah what's that i think 
pretty sure Ray Prem was hanging out there too. Yeah, Ray uh, Frenchy. Yeah, there there was actually quite a few different characters in there too. There's people who was like, "Oh shit, I haven't seen that person in years." You know? Yeah, yeah. I thought that was a cool band we got to be. It was Anar on bass, Rob Kidd on drums, yeah. you and me playing guitars. Uh, Sydney Wright played some keyboards. Is right, yeah, yeah. What it a was, good night. Yeah. So um, to so go ahead. to answer your question, I, I'm almost kind of compelled to ask you how how would you how would you quantify these genre I'm making since like Mel me. Like what genre is the music that you're playing? What how would I describe it? Like in an elevator pitch? Yeah, yeah. I, it seems like like this sounds weird, but I, I don't know how to do it either, man. I don't know if I've, we've ever had this conversation, but you can look on genre of music that I play, and in so many places it'll say French pop, and that's because I never know how to how to categorize mine. But in the time of MySpace, I saw French pop, and I was like, oh yeah. That sounds cool as shit. That's what I want to play. Whatever that is, yeah, I, that's what I play. So, uh, what would right. I say? Yours is your, yours is like yours. Your music is like what I would say. I don't want to say pop rock because it's not pop rock, but it is. It, it would be like a, a radio rock okay. to me in my mind. Like I hear these great songs. They've got great choruses. They got hooks. They're put together well. They're, they're mixed in like a. a in like a it's got muscle but you right. know what i mean it would fit in the same world of like a smashing pumpkins or or hmm. uh you know later sound garden okay not okay. so much loud as bomb sound garden but more like right you know <laughs> so it's so it's like radio rock with pop hooks or pop. yeah like it belongs on the radio it, it, it can be absorbed by many people which is great okay okay I, I feel like you and me both meet in that in that sort of pop sensibility world yeah totally you know yeah i feel like i have a little more mono mix vibe than you do you know what i mean like lo-fi lo-fi like a four track guy you know what i mean right did Dude, you ever just cool, right? yeah man great too you know the thing is is it, it's it's what makes up it, it's what makes up the spectrum of who we mm -hmm. are as a community you know what i mean right I right mean, john totally. d graham is awesome but I, we can't all be him i don't know why <laughs> i picked him i don't know why i picked him out of the bunch <laughs> you know johnny gowdy is awesome but but we can't all be Tug Olson. <laughs> <laughs> Something you know, I, I, sad about I, I, being interchangeable I, with that guy. Yeah, I, know, I love it. <laughs> I, real quick, so so Jason Harold's album, which is nine, ten songs, he he had this he had this one song in there that was like kind of a kind of a laid back kind of kind of nice sort of country groove, like you know Texas yeah, yeah. Playboys kind of thing. And he sent me his sort of rough demo and, and, and his rough mix. And I went, well, I went, dude, the lyrics in this, like Dale Watson could fucking cover this song. And it would be a huge hit for him because the lyrics are very much, it's, the lyrics sound like if Ron White wrote lyrics for Dale Watson. Oh, that's funny. I mean, it's like straight up about drinking, you know? Okay. And, and I was like, but musically it didn't fit. And this is just, again, he was, he was asking for, for my sort of like real world kind of input here. And I, and I went, okay, here. I said, I said, speed up the tempo of the song, shift the key down a little bit. Right. And go and go to a bunch of Marshall Crenshaw. Yeah. And because I'm, I'm, I'm hearing like a funny mixture of Dale Watson, Marshall Crenshaw with a tiny, tiny bit of some Brian Wilson sensibility without being, you know, California out and like super, 1966 right, right but i think it i think the final mix should should sound like it was cut on elvis's 1959 mono tape deck right so he did that and then i got on google and i looked up the the actual tape deck that all that stuff was cut on how many tracks was it really two tracks was, was it just dual mono was it just right up the middle you know and I, and i i don't i don't have a bunch of vintage gear but 
what I did was, was something crazy. He he sent me back the the uh, drums, which was like a, a cajon and like a slap and a stop and a room mic, a really nice bass sound, some acoustic, some electric, and a vocal. Actually, two two vocal takes. And I came out of my jaw, which is logic because I'm such a lazy butthole. And I came out of logic, shot it. I have, a, I have a tiny bathroom over here. I shot each individual track out of the dog, out of a Yamaha speaker, and mic the tile in my bathroom. Right, right. And then literally printed each individual stem dry. Okay, here's here's dry coming, right. coming through analog. Here's wet, the actual bathroom tone. And then went back in didn't pan anything around kept it right up the middle like like it, like this this one song is completely mono that is so killer low, dude it's really cool so it's, it's the cool. low end is really fat and wide and it came out pretty goddamn good that's awesome man i can't wait to hear it um yeah hey, it's great uh, song that's cool that you did it in like the old school way like physically doing it as opposed to calling up mm-hmm. the fucking uh plug-in of the thing with the yeah. elvis plug-in for 1955 no. elvis right i was like yeah. fuck that I, I got a bathroom and real tile and an actual tube mic i'm i'm, I'm gonna you and know it, it takes more, but it's totally worth it yeah it makes the hair on your arm stand up and it feels like yeah. whatever whatever uh whatever lewis and clark felt when they were discovering shit you know what i mean it feels good man right yeah right. well uh Andy, people can find you at at McIntyreRocks.com. The singles are Find Yourself and uh, Fuck Yourself, the B-side of the single. Of course, Dirty Conversations, we came out earlier in, in 2020, and a whole host of other things that you can find at the places where you stream and download your jams. Do you, who, who is that? What do you just got to... Uh, that, that, was, that was lunch. That was Sam bringing in lunch. It's nice. You get like people just yeah. bringing you lunch. What if uh, dude, you're like a famous guy or something? What's going on? Well, well yeah, I'm famous. That's no wonder stuff. we're not video chatting anymore in the wasted. Hey, if you get wasted tonight, it's Friday. If you get wasted tonight. Yeah, it is. yeah let's video message each other. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, yeah. We'll have another one of these conversations, just less recording. But anyway, people can find your stuff. Where Do, do, you, do you recommend people coming to your band camp? Yeah, uh, come on out to my band camp. Um, un- unfortunately, we don't have the new double, or I don't have the new double single printed up physically on compact discs yet because, well, I just haven't done that yet. And, but I mean, uh, so to be, before I answer your question, dir- Dirty Conversations, Find Yourself, Fuck Yourself, and like two other songs that I need to finish um, will be compiled together to make another ep here okay hopefully at the end so okay um yeah but so you can go to mcintyrerocks.com you can go to apple music you can go to all the places man. and you'll spotify or you you can go to <laughs> or you can go to Bandcamp. Bandcamp, the artist friendly Bandcamp, man everybody loves it yeah 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 well, dude, it's been great talking to you and catching up, and I miss you. We should stay in touch. Thanks for yes. reaching out. Uh, I love these tunes. Cool. I love, or I Thank should say, I love this tune both ways. <laughs> and uh, and take care, man. I will. You too. That's my man, Andy McIntyre. Check out his single, his double single, Find Yourself, along with Fuck Yourself, available now wherever it is you stream and download your jams. Go to McIntyreRocks.com for all of your Andy McIntyre needs. Always great catching up with my friend Andy Andy McIntyre on the the show here. What a talented dude. Hey, gang, don't forget when you're out there checking out uh, Andy McIntyre at McIntyreRocks.com. Don't forget that you subscribe to this podcast wherever it is you get uh, podcasts, be it Apple Podcasts, Spotify, TuneIn, Overcast, Stitcher, the Podbean app where you can go and listen to all 1,016 episodes of How Did I Get Here. If you, have the, if you have the Podbean app, you can listen to everything. And if you have one of the other apps, you only get like the latest 20 shows. All right? We're dropping three shows a week, new shows every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. 
All right, Friday we'll be talking to the great Nakia. Yeah, the legendary Nakia. He's happening. All right, baby. Let's hear the rest of this song. Find yourself from our man Andy McIntyre. Go check it out wherever it is you stream and download your jams. Have a great week, whatever it is you're doing. I'll talk to you on Friday. Let's get down.